to hush it up. You've been day drinking. And I don't know if y'all feel the same way, but there ain't nothing worse than when one of your friends have been out drinking and you haven't been. And they bring all that foolishness in around you. Look at this, you old trash, you old drinker. Uh, that's the worst thing. You ever been around someone that's drunk and you're not? That's the work, me? Now here's something you don't see every day. Bucky's in the pond, literally in the pond, rolling around in the water. <laughs> I hope he's okay. I don't guess there's a problem with him doing that. You just don't see it very often. Well, as a matter of fact, that's the first time I've ever seen it. He just thought that was the funnest thing ever, getting down in the water and just roll around. Uh, I wish I could have, <laughs> ouch. I wish I could have recorded more of that for you guys, but that's cute that he's doing that. And then I'm thinking, was there, did he ever have access to go inside of a pond at the other property? And probably not. Uh, Ivy doesn't know what's going on. She's like, I'm not real sure what's wrong with you, Bucky's, but that's weird. Look at Bucky's. He's, that is too cute. What are y'all doing? What was that all about? What and why? What are they doing? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Poor, poor Tina's like, that hurts my feet. I can't run that way I used to. Y'all, y'all can't be running up on me like that and scaring me. Ivy, do not be chasing that bird around. So today is the very first day that we've got the sprinkler set up for the birds. Uh, Tass like, I remember you. This brings back memories of my childhood. Tass, that was only last year. That was only last year, you big galoot. Y'all do remember that last year. I put the sprinklers on all the time and they'd come and sit in the water. That was last year, you big doofus. Jamie is very concerned about Dixie's health. And I'm gonna tell you right now that the advice that our vet told us last time she was here is that whenever a day goes by and you realize that the quality of life is no longer there, that's the day that you go ahead and make that decision. And so you give them their pain you know, their painkillers, you brush them, you give them she got her Gatorade and she got a beer and she does all that she can do to make her feel better. But she's having to seriously, guys, I'm, I'm gonna say this and I'm not trying to steal anything from Jamie as far as, this is her story to tell more than it's mine. This is Jamie's story to tell more than mine. I'm just gonna say that again. But from, an, from, a, from someone that loves Dixie and loves Jamie, loves Beverly, I notice that Jamie has to seriously look harder and harder every single day to decide if there truly is any quality, any quality in the life that Dixie's living right now. When every step is agonizing and she prefers to stay right there in that shelter throughout the entirety of the day. And when it seems like the only comfort she gets is when someone's right there, you know, hand feeding her something or showing her, you know, attention. Carl's come by to say, hey, I remember the old water sprinkler. It's about time you got this thing out. This is actually the first day it's been this hot. It's, uh, I've been talking a lot about our overcast skies. We, we have had an entire week of it's been hot, but with overcast skies. And that, you know, makes it a little bit easier than today. You got this direct sunlight and it's tough. And so this is the midday. I just come out, Jamie and I had lunch and uh, we'll be going over to I'm a Survivor here in a little bit but she wanted to do all of her Dixie care first. 
smells like beer out here, like a beer joint. <laughs> like these girls got their own little cantina going here. Well, Mr. Hunk, you ain't getting no beer. Now you need to hush it up. It's Friday afternoon. It is Friday, but Ben's like, shh. Beverly, you are too young for that beer. <laughs> I know you are. Look at you, you little thing. Just she chugging it, it down. Ch oh God, oh, hold on. That, if that's not a drunk, <laughs> if that's not a drunken look, I don't know. I've had that look a few times myself, Beverly. I know Look exactly it. how you're feeling, Beverly, and it ain't, it ain't, feels good now, but it ain't gonna feel good tomorrow, Beverly. Look, he's like, give it to me. <laughs> All right, today we're gonna take the ladies over and reintroduce them to Carl. I think that I've already talked a little bit about why we're doing this. We want to transition Carl out to the big pasture but we want to make sure first that we're not going to have any issues as far as him running, uh, especially the girls that can't run, like Tina he, and Wanda. We don't want Carl to run them silly. Uh, Stella, don't you be running. Wanda's going to kick you right in the face. Come on now. Come on, Tina. You all know Tina has a leg issue. Wanda has a leg issue, and we don't want Carl running them. So we're going to make sure... Uh, that Carl's not going to run them before I let Carl into the big pasture. Uh, but that's my goal, is to get all the birds worked into here, to get them plenty of running room. But first, we've got to have a little trial and error, a little trial run, if you will. Uh, what's going to happen is, the reason I'm going to put the birds in with Carl first is because if for some reason Carl is trying to run them like mating kind of stuff then I can always separate them easier in the small pastures I can't separate them in, in the big pasture once they get to going and I would hate that Carl takes off chasing them they did a little mating ritual run around and uh, one of them gets hurt in all of this in all of that with all of the you know what I'm saying right you know what I'm saying just tell me you know what I'm saying. It's a good plan. Say, Lester, you know what? You got a good plan there, Lester. That's a good plan. I'm going to let them follow me up. I got a, I got some crackers here I'm shaking so they can follow me over. What we don't want are these guys getting into Mama's garden. That's what we have to avoid at all costs. Come on, little ones. Come on, babies. Come on. They're like, this is some good grass over here. This is actually not good grass. I'm a little bit embarrassed. Um... We're having a hard time getting grass to grow here. You know, this has all been seeded. And I'm guessing the seed mixture that I bought is not the right kind for either this soil or these temperatures. Oh, Beverly, hush it up, you old drunken. Beverly's been drinking too much. Come on, y'all. Come on. Yeah, uh, we will address the grass issue. Now, this grass over here, we did not plant. This was already here. This is natural grass. I say natural. This was here before we moved in. But all of that we planted. And everywhere we planted, it's not growing as good. So I would like this natural stuff to slowly <laughs> seed over into here. But as of now, it's not. Come on, babies. Come on. Y'all follow daddy. Let's go. Come on now. Come on. Look how good my dogs are. They're hot. That's how hot of a day it is. They're like, uh-uh. Leave us in the shade. We'll watch Daddy from a distance. You need to hush it up. You've been day drinking. That is the worst thing in the world. Now, if you're drinking together, you get stupid together. And that's okay. But if you're drinking by yourself and you're stupid around someone else, then that's the most annoying thing ever. Oh, that's right. As a bartender, you wouldn't know that. Yeah, bartenders probably put up with that mess all the time. Come on, girls. Yeah, so Beverly's been drinking all day, and I haven't. And she's acting all foolish, and I'm not having it. Now, if I had been drinking with you, sweetie, but I only drink on the weekends, and I only drink at night. And I don't even drink that much. Don't let Jamie fool y'all. Come on, girls. So, you know what? I have an occasional drink in the hot tub. In our portable hot tub, I have an occasional drink, and Jamie makes it sound like I'm a wino. I'm not some kind of a wino, Jamie. Well, you're going to make people think I'm a wino. I'm some kind of a doper wino. 
and I'm not. Am I? No, I'm asking these guys, am I that bad? <laughs> Come on, girls, I'm tired, I'm hot. I got the sprinklers going. Tina ain't having it. Tina's like, saying, uh -uh, I ain't going over there. I'm gonna stay over here with the grass. And then them two right there are curious. Debbie's like, oh, hey, Carl. I'm not sure what Wanda's gonna be thinking. So, no, uh, Carl has not been an issue at all to Tat or any of his children who are all over here. So I'm, I don't think there'll be a problem with putting the ladies in. I think that that season has, I think we're in a new season here. But I just kind of need to see it with my own eyes for a couple of days before I believe it. Thinks all my jokes are corny. Convict movies make her horny. She likes ketchup on her scrambled eggs. She swears like a sailor when she shaves her legs. She takes a lick and keeps on ticking. I'm never gonna let her go. He ain't got late in the month of Sunday. I caught him once and he was sniffing my undies. He ain't that shy, but he gets shit done. Drinks his beer like it's oxygen. But he's my baby and I'm his honey. Never gonna let him go. In spite of ourselves, we'll end up sick. Don't him that way. Come on, baby. Walk that way, Tina. I guess so long. Walk that way, sweet girl. It's honey, we're the big way, dog ride. All right, we're ready. We're coming we're your way. We're going to spy. Our noses right off of our faces. Oh no. It won't be nothing but big old hearts dancing in that's our eyes. Holding on hope to Dixie. <laughs> that's the kind of moments right there. Oh no, who's holding open the gate for me? Oh Lord, here she comes. It needs to be a little bit okay. Oh Lord. Oh no, gosh, holy moly. Tina, Tina, all right, we'll walk Tina to the other fence, I guess. Sure? Well, yeah, because we got goats over there. Come on. Just walk and I'll make her follow behind you. Tina, settle it down. I'm trying to get big. All right, Tina, keep on walking. We'll go on around, baby, and I'll follow you. And then, uh, I don't know what her plans are. She's going to your fruit tree. No, she skipped it. She's gonna go check off Tina, follow mama. Go ahead, baby, I'll walk her. Get a leap. You wanna just go right there? No, we got the water fountain going, the sprinkler. Shake the bucket, we gotta walk faster, babe. This, this is, you're gonna congest her with all these animals. Oh, Lord. Shake it. Tina, walk in there, sweetie. Tina, go. <laughs> all right, now we'll keep an eye on them here. They got all three pastures that are adjacent that are all opened up. Watch your step, babe. And then uh, there's also good, clean grass in all three pastures. There's also places they can roll in there for their dirt baths. And we're going to leave them here for a few days and kind of let everyone readjust and reacquaint to each other. And uh, they'll also have sprinkler time, which is kind of an enrichment activity. <laughs> wow. Just like old times, huh, ladies? Y'all just excuse Beverly, she's drunk. But uh, I've gotten all of the birds in here together. Uh, Carl is the only one that has not walked over here yet. And how strange is that, that he's like the leader of all of them, yet he's, I guess because he's been separated for a while, he's having a hard time deciding on if he wants to be leader of the goats or leader of the big birds. Uh, what they're doing now is all getting a chance to become familiar with the pasture. This is Tat here in front of me. And guys, I, I don't know. I don't want to mislead you. I'm not scared of Tat yet. I mean, I am scared of him. I mean, you have to respect the size of these animals and the talons and everything but he's not giving me any signs that he's dangerous he's just getting to be t too big 
And when I say too big, I just mean that he's getting to the size where if he was to turn uh, or even have a bad day, it could, it could be very risky for me or anybody else who might be here. Miss Pat, Mr. David, along the fence, their grandkids who come by all the time to visit. Beverly, kidding. Kidding about Beverly. She's just she's she's had a few too many. Beverly, you're being not you're gonna get me hurt, Beverly. Oh Lord, she's gonna get me hurt. Just as I'm talking about the dangerous animals, Beverly comes by to show me who's the biggest threat of them all. And it's a and it's a it's a drunken Beverly. Sweetie, I love you, okay? But the birds are getting familiar with the pastures and they don't know about a donkey who has a drinking problem. Wanda, look out. She's going to kick you, Wanda. She don't know what she's doing. Now she might kick me too. Don't you even think about it, Beverly. Sheesh. So, oh boy. Here comes the old pecker. No, you're not going to be pecking me, Wanda. Anyway, we're going to hope. Oh my gosh. What do you want, Beverly? Baby, what do you want? I don't have any more beer. Mama's the one that does the beers, not me. Don't you start kicking at me. She will, y'all. She'll... She'll come up and just start kicking for no reason. Look at her. Uh, you think I'm making this stuff up, don't you? You think I make this stuff up, and then you see it, and you're like, oh. Oh, I guess Lester was right. There is a threat. Don't let your troubles fester. Come watch Longhorn Lester. <laughs> yeah, something like that.